Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hello, welcome Howdy. to Drinking Bros, kids. Who do we got today, D'Anthony? We have uh, Senior Graham Allen from Tejas. <laughs> recent, recent, uh, uh, recently moved to Texas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Enjoying yeah. Enjoying that whole I, uh, stuff, yeah. I, I've been asking everybody how long I have to be here before I can, you know, just claim that I'm from Texas, and nobody can give me a direct answer. So I'm just gonna do it. I'm just th- gonna just say I'm from Texas. Yeah, I think Texas is like the Borg from Star Trek. You just get assimilated by it as soon as you move there. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you're from Texas. Got it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You're one of those people though that automatically everyone assumes that you were from Texas. They're like, oh, they they, they did, they did. They're like, oh, I thought you were in Texas uh, the entire time. No, I, I'm from Mississippi, but you know. I I mean, I can understand. Sounds similar. I feel like every huge military personality now lives in Texas. We got you down there. We got uh, yeah. Matt, Matt Best down there. Evan Hafer's mm-hmm. down there. Dakota Myers down there. Tim Kennedy's yeah. down there. Crispy yeah. is down there. Yeah. All of the uh, yeah, a lot of the us, grunt man. style guys are there too now. Yeah, that's right. All those guys, those guys are all them. so much more amazing than me, though. That's what I tell everybody all the time. Like, like you just described, Medal of Honor recipient. Uh, Ranger, Special Forces, <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. I, I was none of those things. <laughs> I was just an Army guy, normal, straight up uh, loser in that regard. But, uh, you know, I appreciate you having me in the same conversation as those amazing uh, people. Well, you don't give yourself enough credit. Currently, you're the, <laughs> you're the number one most followed military personality on all of Facebook. Are you aware of that? <laughs> Uh, I sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with that. Somebody why, why had to have told you that along the way of like, Hey man, it's been brought up. It's been brought up. Yeah. Uh, your podcast, dear America is yes. also on the charts overall. Yep. Uh, we're, yep. we're neck and you're neck and neck with drinking bros now. And you just started <laughs> what? Three months ago. Uh, we just filmed episode 23 today. So yeah. Wow. And so, so, so it's still really new. So, uh, no, no, we're really thankful about that. It's been, it's been crazy. It was one of those things, Ross, you know, me and you talked about it before we launched it. I didn't expect it to like tank by any means, Sure. but you never, you, you just never really know how things are going to do until you do it. And so we've been really humbled by, uh, uh, the reception of it. Everybody's been been super pumped about it, so we're excited about that. You've come out of the gate strong. You had Dan Crenshaw on. Uh, how is mm-hmm. that guy mm-hmm. in real life, by the way? Because uh, he's one of our favorites, and, and yeah. we, we hope he runs um, You know, a- after Trump here in 2024. Yeah, Dan was one of those things, man. It, it was weird. I ran into Dan when he was congressman-elect in December at this uh, event I went to in West Palm Beach, Florida. And so everybody was like hailing Dan, you know, and, and kind of scared to talk to him. And I mean, you know me, I just went up to him. I was like, what's up, dude? You know, kind of thing. And next thing I know, we ended up, you know, at the bar uh, having a couple drinks, hanging out. And, uh, you know, he was asking about how to do this social media stuff. So what a lot of people really? don't know is that me, Dan, and a couple other social media people, uh, typical liberal, D.C. Drano, a couple guys like that, we actually sat around for two or three nights down there in Florida and gave him a bunch of social media pointers. And I mean, he took it, obviously he has some of the fastest growing pages uh, out there right this second. And anyway, all that to say, we actually became pretty good friends. So uh, Dan, Dan's, Dan's a good guy in real life. He's kind of a, uh, he's sarcastic in real life. Like he's super, he takes jabs at you like subtly, like, like that's his uh, comedic style as he likes to <laughs> poke at you kind of thing. And, uh, but no, no, he's a good dude. Yeah, is he is he as good as advertised? Like you know, off screen, uh, like is is he that dude? Do you think he? Let me ask you: Do you think he could become the next president of the United States? I think he could. I, I think that uh, he's under a lot of heat right now for that uh, red flags tweet. Um, and me and him talked about it, but we'll see how he responds. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll see how he responds. Uh, you know, every politician is going to have situations come up where. You know, people freak out about things that you tweet or things like that. And so I think this is his first, like, real uh, storm, I guess you could say, uh, so far. I mean, he's still infancy in his uh, political career. So this is his first storm. We'll see how he does. Yes, look, speaking of which, um, you took some heat on social media. Uh, (laughs) Not not that you're always not. Exactly. Not that you're always not taking heat on social media. But you came out strong with a video the day after the shootings in in Dayton Mm -hmm. and El Paso 
Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this. Why post the video so quickly afterwards? And what was that blowback like for you? Uh, the blowback wasn't that bad. I, I got upset. You know, a lot of people, it, it's, it's a weird thing. So, so it's at a point now where people almost expect you to respond to certain things. And so I didn't actually respond the day of. I responded the next day. Uh, the, the day of, I, uh, I just sent out a tweet, you know, uh, saying that we were praying for the families and the victims. Uh, or the families of the victims and, and things like that. And, and so, I mean, I do have some tact in that regard. I, I, I've never really responded to any great tragedy like that the day of with anything other than, you know, sympathy and regards. But I, it just, man, it irritates me so bad seeing people politicize dead bodies when they're, uh, you know, they're, they're still warm, you know, to, to an extent. And it just bothered me. And then, of course, you know, the calls for gun control always happen. And I just get tired of the false information. You know, people saying that all of these massive gun violences are happening by white supremacists and people who voted for Trump are white supremacists. And, you know, they 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 push this rhetoric and things. And I just got tired of it. And so I just said what I felt. Uh, we don't have a gun problem, in my opinion. Uh, when I was in school, it, it wasn't anything to walk around the parking lot and there'd be 270 rifles hanging up in the back window of the truck because guys would come in from the woods hunting, yep. go to school. You know, we, we didn't have not one problem. Yeah. Uh, people weren't afraid. People weren't scared. So did the guns change? No. Uh, we didn't create Skynet in real life that the guns have minds of their own and they're just shooting people at will because they don't like brown people. You, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, the problem is we changed. The society changed. We have a we have a breakdown of culture. We have a societal problem. We have a mental health problem. You know, veterans know this more than anybody else. There's a serious taboo still with mental health issues. People don't like to talk about it. People don't like to bring it up. Uh, I think parents are to blame in that regard uh, because there is such this taboo around it. You know, you don't want to be the parent to say that your kid has some mental health issues and you're working on that. You, you know what I mean? Like, like, like that's still a taboo thing to think about. And it shouldn't be. Um, uh, absolutely. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of parents out there who look, you know, I've got two kids. I love my kids more than life itself, but they can't come to terms with the fact that their child might have a mental health problem because they're too embarrassed to talk right. about it. And, uh, right. you know, at the neighborhood functions and, and whatnot, and they don't want to get involved in it. Uh, they want their kid to, quote unquote, lead a normal life. So they just kind of ignore the problem. Well, right. that's really fucking stupid. Yeah. Honestly, look. Oh, yeah. No, if, I agree. Like, you're, there's a couple of things I want to address about what you've said so far. So one is yeah, go uh, for it. reacting quickly, like putting messaging out there quickly. I understand that it's a little uh, maybe insensitive to immediately come out but if you're in a focal point of leadership position like if you're in the military yep. we're in a fucking gunfight everybody's freaking out it's your job to calm people down and get a back on mission mm -hmm. and i think True. that's that's what uh neil degrasse tyson tried to do the other day correct with his tweet yeah. which he absolutely got lit up like look this guy is typically pretty liberal um on most social issues so he just said like he he gave a list of how many people die in certain types of events over any 48 mm -hmm. hour period not just during a tragedy Right. And he said something to the effect of uh, we often let emotions and not data dictate how we react to things, which is. Oh, we totally correct. do. Yeah. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, we totally do. Uh, another thing you said was that you guys like you, you challenged the crowd to find somebody more pro police than you guys are. And we're more pro police. So fuck off. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. I should have said I should have said one A, one B. Yeah, that's what I should have. That's what I should have. No, done. no, no. That's that's a fake one. The the other one is you say we don't have a gun problem in this country. I agree with that, and here's some evidence to that effect. Um, all the gun law, like the you, you could argue now, and since the '80s, gun laws are stricter now than they ever have been, with the Brady Bill, Brady Bill Two, stuff like that. Um, Here's some data for you, and I just want to say uh, that it's it, it's very clear that this is a mental health issue, and yep. it's, a, it's a, like a cultural issue with violence, and it's not just the U.S. that has it. Um, 310 people are shot in the U.S. daily. And if you remove suicides, accidents, and legal interventions, you're down to about 130 per day, right? This mm -hmm. is going to get a little wonky, so stay with me. Sure. 
Uh, All right. In England and Wales, 43,000 people a year or 117 per day are stabbed. That's, okay. that's from 2018. That's very recent data. Um, <clears throat> so the population in the U.S. is about 327 million, while the population of England and Wales combined is about 58.8. That means in the U.S., 14.5 people per 100,000 are, sh- are purposely shot each year, while in England, 73 per 100,000 are stabbed each year. That is a fucking huge, that's like five times more mm-hmm. people are stabbed in, in England, which is a relatively peaceful country, at least right. on the world scale. It's not even close. So, <clears throat> and you're not allowed to have knives over there in the city of London uh, on you, yeah. correct? No, but th- you're yeah. not, but it's still happening. Right. So it, just, well, it, it yeah. reinforces a couple of things. One is that there is a problem with culture and not with the individual weapon. Two, it's that those <clears throat> laws aren't going to stop people from having those weapons. True. So both of those things are fucking stupid. Yeah. So what, what can be done is the question. Uh, and do you think Dan Crenshaw was unfairly lit up for his, his statement about the red flag. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So the day after I, I reached out to Dan and, and we actually talked for about 45 minutes on it. Um, and the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm fighting the, uh, the Texas allergies here. The, uh, the, the video that Dan released on his Instagram, the audio clip mm-hmm. is actually the audio clip that I asked him to do for the podcast so I could just make sure, you know, cause I was paraphrasing our conversation and I said, you know, give me something that's your words. So, you know, so I don't misinterpret something the way you don't want it, uh, misinterpreted. Um, I don't agree with Dan on the red flag laws. Uh, and, and, you know, and we had a very civil conversation about it. Um, you know, I, I consider it a slippery slope kind of law. Um, I don't necessarily think that it, I trust people like Dan. Okay, so 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 let me be clear. I think Dan's the real deal. I think his heart's in the right place. I think his thinking is in the right place. The problem is you can't open up that kind of door for the people that could come after Dan. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Or, or the people that would be able to take that. And I, I don't trust the government that much. It, it, and so anything that expands upon or adds upon a freedom, I'm all for. Anything that constitutionally infringes in any kind of way, I, I'm not for. Because we have to make a decision on whether or not we're emotionally based or we're constitutionally based. And sometimes the Constitution doesn't care about the emotions of things. And we, we, we have to draw that line in the sand somewhere. And I think, you know, in the heat of the moment, I think he put a tweet out. I don't know. I, I can't speak for him if he would if he would. Uh, change that now, uh, yeah, but you gonna, can't. Say, you can't delete it. You can't delete it because then you're admitting wrong. You know, and so correct, we live in a yeah. society. You can't delete it. So the only thing you can do is leave it and kind of just take what comes and then try to uh, weather the storm afterwards. Yeah, I, I was curious if if he said you know had possibly walked that back at all because uh, you know as of today, not to me. Okay, yeah, because as of today, the red flag plan has support in Congress. Uh, is, is what they're yes. saying. And, you know, quietly behind the scenes, they're trying to get something done. Um, and it looks like this is probably going to be the first thing that passes. Where are you at on the red flag issue, Dan? Well, I mean, here, the first thing that Dan did was clarify between TAPS and red flag laws. TAPS, yes. TAPS, yeah. TAPS is an advisory committee that's, yep. that has NGOs, like non-governmental organizations, uh, legal minds, uh, uh, psychologists, all kinds of shit that come together to write some kind of plan for this. And basically, mm-hmm. it's expanding lo- state and local government's ability to use the same tools that the federal government's using to identify red flags. The big Correct. question is, what do we do once we find those red flags? Um, a temporary restraining... Like, here, here's the deal. If we're going to claim that this is a mental health issue, then it, then it becomes our responsibility to deal with the mental health issue. Like, if you're going to fucking point at that problem, then it becomes <clears throat> incumbent upon you to do something about it, in my opinion. Right. Um, and we're not doing shit about it right now. And I, I agree, by the way, that it's a mental health problem. 61% of all gun deaths are suicides. That, exactly. that is an overwhelming majority. And you, got, you can't tell me that uh, 61% of something is clearly a mental health issue and that the whole issue isn't probably mental health. Right? But, but they leave that out on purpose, <clears throat> man. And, and the reason why they do that is they also change the wording of gun violence and gun-related deaths. So the left and the Democrats or people that are anti-gun, they will say that, I don't know, I think Bernie a couple months ago said 40,000 
uh, deaths as a result to gun violence last year or something like that. Yeah, it's more like 11. Um, yeah, exactly. But 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 gun violence and gun related deaths are two different things. They want you to believe that 40,000 people were shot walking out of a Walmart and things like that, right. where it's not true. Gun related deaths. Yeah, that, that may be accurate. But these same people will look at those numbers and stats and then you'll have 70,000 abortions in one city alone in a year, you know, and they, and they don't even blink an eye about those kind of things. Well, I think uh, we can't we can't seem to have an honest conversation about this. Right. The, the left wants to push this narrative, and they have been for the last week, that there's been 250 mass shootings this year. By the definition of a mass shooting, that's correct. Four, four more yeah. people get shot. That's right. The overwhelming yep. majority of those, all but 17, have happened in inner cities and are, yep. are like crime related. I wonder not, where Chicago stands in that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's stupid. So, uh, you know, that's not to marginalize their impact. We should have... Well, I, I think maybe America's a little coddled, too, and this is an aside, but uh, we're one of those countries that has the expectation of safety in public, but go live in Israel for a little while. See how, right. See how yeah, exactly. Shit. I mean, it's, we're, we're pretty we're, – I mean, this is the greatest country in the world because of what we believe and stand for. So, yeah, I expect it to be like that, but sometimes you've got to fucking get bloody. And I don't mean civilians on the street. I mean, metaphorically speaking, we have to take control of this bullshit because here, here's the deal. The way Crenshaw has been getting hammered, like I don't think he did a good enough job of explaining his positions before making them public. You're right. He probably did come off the cuff a little bit. That was an error. <clears throat> but yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's selling out the Second Amendment. Um, well, you remember when Tim Kennedy came out on Rogan and uh, yeah. talked about you know, some possibilities yeah, yeah. of what you can do no. to, to curb gun Here, violence. Here's the deal. He if got lit up as yeah, well. Yeah, he did. If you're, if, oh, you're, yeah. if you're a conservative person and you want to see – like, I know you guys don't want to see these deaths happen. Like, not Correct. not one of them is okay. And I also know you don't want to fucking have your rights infringed upon, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Uh, it's a reasonable stance. <clears throat> but you have to do more than fucking blast hate mail on Twitter and Instagram. S just re constantly repeating, shall not be infringed, shall not be infringed. Shut the fuck up, all right? This is a serious problem that needs to be dealt with, and you're not helping. And I'll tell you what. If you keep taking that hard stance like that without any or just being intractable in your position, then the left is going to keep pushing. And when they get in power, they're going to decide how to solve this issue. And fuck that, because you know what yeah. their solution is going to be. Right. We have to come up with a solution right now for this shit. Otherwise, we're putting it in their hands. And do you trust the left in this country to, to write gun policy? Because I don't. No, I, I don't. But, uh, you know, from the, the civilian aspect of it, you, you got to give something of it. Right. And again, as a civilian, like AR-15s, for example, uh, and these military-style assault weapons is what the, the media is calling these. What, what is the actual purpose? And again, this is purely from a, a civilian standpoint. What is the actual purpose of owning those in America besides just the right to own them? Well, in Texas, it's hunting feral hogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's pretty easy. Sure. Uh, and look, there's no... like. A two two three round is not anywhere near as bad as a fucking seven six two by three nine AK forty seven round. Like it's not yep. it, it punches through shit. Unless it's yep. subsonic, then it's gonna bounce around a little bit, but it's not the fucking like people who have actually been in this is why it's so we, we act so incredulously when they say this shit. Like I've seen dudes get zippered with a saw two M two four nine and just keep walking. Like six to nine shots up their fucking torso. And they're still walking around like, holy shit. These mm. fucking steel core rounds that they just punch right through stuff. They're supersonic rounds, man. It's not. Oh, God. But 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 you got to take the stance of this besides because this is again, this is what they're going to keep throwing at you from the left and from yeah. Congress. Besides killing feral hogs. What is the other use for an AR-15? Well, here, here, here's the, the in, argument. In real life. Made. People say that when the Second Amendment was written, that we had muskets that took a minute to fire. Sure, it did. But so did the government, motherfucker. And look, these mm -hmm. weapons are designed to help us protect us from the government. And I hear the same argument now that the government's got nuclear weapons and, and an air force and blah, blah, blah. You, you think you're going to beat them back with fucking small arms? Vietnam, right? Afghanistan and Iraq. Tell me a fucking small, unconventional army with small arms can't fucking fight off the U.S. government because they've been doing yep. it for fucking 50 years now. Get fucked with that bullshit. Right. Like you yeah, can, you can I, absolutely I, take a stand against an impressive government with whatever you have lying around. 
Yeah. The the problem is we live in a society where, uh, you know, this is the first elections coming up in 2020 that the boomer generation is not the majority of voters that millennials are. Um, and we live in a society now that truly does not think about the what if, right? You know, oh, government loves us. Oh, government's going to take care of us. You know, the Democrats want to want to bring in democratic socialism because, you know, they want us all to be equal and have this and have that and free health care for everyone, except we're going to raise taxes to do it, which how the left gets away with that, I don't know, because they're not even trying to hide it. Of course, we got to raise taxes to give you free health care. Health care isn't free. But either way, the point is they don't think about the fact, well, what happens when the government no longer has your best interest in mind? What are you going to do? to ensure the fact that you are heard, to ensure the fact that they do not force things upon you that you do not want to happen to you and your family. What are you going to do? If push ever came to shove, what are you going to do? I had a conversation about this in D.C. Uh, on a Q&A thing that I did, and they asked what I thought the, the most important amendment was. Well, a majority of people will argue and they'll say, well, the First Amendment is so you can speak and say whatever you believe and what you feel. I don't believe that. I, I, I believe that uh, we'll do the 1A, 1B. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Second Amendment is your 1A because the Second Amendment is the only amendment that can ensure that you keep all the rest of them. You know, First Amendment is great, but what if the government says, well, you can't say that anymore? Well, yes, I can. No, you can't because we're going to come get you if you do. Well, that's what the, that is what the Second Amendment is for, is those kind of situations. And I think a lot of people forget that. So what's the point of having AR-15s? What's the point of having AK-47s and mm -hmm. things like that? Uh, it's for that type of situation to where you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have your God-given rights as an American to have this, this leveling of the playing field readily available to you if it gets, if it were to ever get to that point, and you're going to train yourself and your family and your kids and everybody else to be able to operate it the same way, but people just, oh, that'll never happen. Are you sure? Yeah. America is only 240 something years old. Are you sure it would never happen? Because yeah. it's happened everywhere else. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, even beyond all that, I, all this makes sense to me, but even beyond that, that there's 30, 30, what, 33 to 36 million gun owners in the U.S.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and seventeen assholes that a we year. know of. Yeah, yeah that, that we know exactly. of for sure. Yeah. But seventeen <laughs> assholes a year are going to decide what thirty-three fucking million people do. No, exactly. Sorry, brother. Exactly. That's not how it works. Uh, it's not a gun problem. It, it's it's certainly a cultural problem. Here's some data to back that up. So, on your show yesterday, you talked about breaking up the nuclear family. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with that language because I think there's a lot of ways to make a family, but there are, there is something about not having a strong male role model in the home like mm -hmm. absolutely yep. so here's some data that i found uh and this is i've, I've verified this <clears throat> of the 27 most deadly mass shooters in u.s history only one was raised from childhood by his biological father mm -hmm. really 26 out of 27 were raised either by some abusive asshole or no father at all yeah like that is overwhelming data yeah that's a shocking amount i did not yeah. know that actually uh, yeah, it's, it's well. You look at you, you look at any social work, any DSM five, and all this stuff uh, in in existence. Any kind of mental health, anything or developmental book, it'll point that you know it has been proven time and time again that the most definitive presence in a uh, adolescent or a child's life that that affects them in their adult life is the father or the father figure. Yeah. kind of thing and and anyone that was lacking that in some way they have problems in some regard it's Trust not issues, yeah and, and when you say in some regard stuff. it's it's uh violent crime in general and yep. the statistical correlation with uh criminal behavior with drug use with dropping out of school with and with people in prison it's overwhelming something like 60 percent of people are in prison right now had the same issue as these 26 out of 27 guys it's mm -hmm. overwhelming so man i don't it's it's so funny in a, in a sad way to hear all this bullshit about toxic masculinity um, and that being the cause of all this. And the abs the, I'll tell you, the overwhelming statistical evidence says that there's actually an absence of ma masculinity. Oh, yeah. And of male yeah. role models. And there's a causal link between that and vital behavior. Masculinity is an evolutionary trait that is specifically designed to have men, which is the physically stronger gender, 
protect themselves, protect their family, protect their tribe. That's why it fucking exists. Like whether you believe in God or evolution or whatever the case is, that particular trait exists for protection reasons. And exactly. if you're not exercising it in a protective manner, your DNA is going to find a way to fucking use it one way or another. And if you don't have yep. that male role model early in your life saying, hey, this is what a man is. A man protects people. They don't hurt people unnecessarily. Like they don't fucking get insecure and lash out. They fucking are strong and they are strong for other people. More importantly, yep. like uh, what's what's his name? Glendon Oakley. Is right. That, yeah. Yeah. Is that the guy, the guy that ran in. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he's an army kids? Yeah. army specialist or PFC. I don't know what he is. Um, <clears throat> and anyways. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Um, it's literally that is literally the reason that masculinity exists in human beings. It's for mm -hmm. that specific purpose. So to tell me that that's toxic. Fuck off. Like, yeah. Show me show me the evidence of tox toxic mas masculinity where dudes who are actual alphas. You don't see fucking jock quarterbacks blowing up fucking people in schools. You don't yeah. see it. You see little nerdy fucking bitches, man. Like, yep. Living in their mom's basement. Yeah. yeah. And they've got a problem with the world because they haven't been laid enough or the girl yeah. that they liked didn't call them back. It's always the same right. thing. 26 <clears throat> out of 27 of the deadliest mass shooters in U.S. history had no father. Right. Now, the yeah. end. It that is the yeah. end of the conversation. Well, it's the I beginning, agree. actually, of the conversation because uh, that brings up to me, and I, I know you, this is kind of wonky too, but there's a, a doctor in the 80s called Shaw, and he has this theory called personal pathway model, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> it was actually meant to deter violent crime and terrorism. Uh, I studied this in, in, for my master's degree. Um, <clears throat> the general idea is that there are points of inflection during people's lives, like the early social socialization process being taught police are bad, for example, or the violence is okay. And not necessarily being taught that directly by, by, by witnessing the actions of others, like a, a bad male role model or no male role model. And you see shit on TV or whatever the case is. Right. right? And then <clears throat> usually there's some kind of narcissistic, narcissistic injury, some kind of bruising to your ego, like a girl that you like not liking you back or being rejected. Never happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like False. being, re never happened, being never. rejected by your dad. And then there's something called escalatory events, like a breakup or a death in the family, a political events or losing your job or whatever the case is. So Shaw theorized that we can find these points of interdiction where we can stop this shit from happening. We can stop these people from becoming what they might become, like a terrorist, for example. Right. Which is why when we bailed out of Afghanistan in the 80s, after we fucking, you know, took care of business there, of course the Taliban was going to come in. Of course they were. Because mm -hmm. there was a fucking vacuum. If we had stayed and done what, uh, <coughs> what's his name? Charlie Wilson uh, from Texas, actually wanted to do which is spend a billion dollars on schools there we would not be in afghanistan fighting right now absolutely what are we doing in chicago we're not spending money on schools they have the most corrupt Yo, political yeah. organization three of the last five governors have spent time in prison motherfucker yeah so don't come to me <laughs> yeah. with this bullshit about guns being intrinsically evil no you're evil bitch fuck yeah. you well look yeah. if you guys had to give something here uh which it, it appears is what congress is going to have to do uh one of the things that's up for debate is these high capacity magazines. Where, where do you guys stand on this? Well, look, I mean, we the, <laughs> gut, gut the, response. <laughs> the, the, the Supreme Court has already ruled that gun rights can be limited. You can't buy uh, fucking fully automatic weapons without a permit. Right. You can't have suppressors without a permit. Those those laws mm -hmm. have existed since the fucking twenties and thirties. Yep, yep so exactly. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with having to have like get a tax stamp. I wouldn't make it prohibitive, like 50 bucks, yeah. but run a background check to get some kind of we yeah. like a, a weapon that you got to jump like through that. all kinds of red tape for a lot of things. Silencers. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. If you ever try to get a silencer, it is a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's a pain in the ass, especially now yeah. because the fucking ATF is so backlog. It's taken like six to nine months to get a tax stamp for a suppressor. Right. No, oh, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. No, but I, like I, you I, and I, yeah. Graham have been background checked. Like if, oh, it, yeah. if it were one of my friends, if it's me, Matt, Jared, yep. any of those people, uh, I'm down. Like we're, we're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Uh, but most, most military people have, you know, well, not, not most, a, a large amount of military veterans have at least secret level clearances and background yeah. checks and everything through, through the military. Yep. So yeah, th that's the thing is, is, I don't know, your, your gun law abiding Americans, 
nobody has a problem with background checks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like nobody has a problem. No, with it's like 90% anything. of the country is in favor of universal yeah. background checks, including of course gun, you, closing of the gun Of course you should check out yeah, who's yeah. buying this, you know, this rifle or this weapon. And so yeah. of course you should. I, I think people start having uh, an issue when you start having conversations like red flag laws to where people can abuse that, well, that person is admitting signs of this, so they should have their weapons taken away uh, involuntarily until we can get to the bottom of this kind of stuff. And, and so Dan and people like that right now, they're saying, well, we're obviously talking about people who have said to their doctor, said to their loved ones straight up, I'm going to go kill this person with this gun. Or I'm going to hurt you know myself what I mean? or whatever the case yeah, is. Yeah, or I'm going a, to hurt myself. That's a problem. Myself. Good legislation is clear and enforceable and yep. not and not exploitable. Those are the three critical parts of any And, and that's any the hard part. And that's the hard part with introducing a red flag law. It is, but is, you, I mean, there's solutions yeah. to that. Like one is to be very specific. Like there's a spe right. specific group and then you add multiple people that have to decide, a judge, a fucking therapist, and uh, a prosecutor all have to fucking decide. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yep. and then uh, there's a time limit on that. You've got fucking 72 hours to make this decision. And that's uh -huh. it. So th that's yeah. one way to handle it. The other way to handle it is to put sunset laws on the bill. So this bill lasts for 18 months, and then we got to vote on it again. It has to be reauthorized right. every 18 months, and it's not open to change. If you want something new, you got to write a whole new bill. Right. right? That's how you. Well, that's I, how you deal with that shit. And I think that's. I think that's what people are afraid of. Right. It is is the wordings of the bill. Is the you know what are the loopholes that could be done in there? I mean, you guys know you guys have done contracts and things like oh, yeah. that, just like me. One word, one word written the wrong way, and people can figure out a way to exploit it. And, and I think that's what people are freaking out about is because any any adult that is you know in their thirties and things like that by this point, they've seen some stuff in their life to where they are naturally hesitant for the interpretation of things that are not the constitution, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so mm -hmm. I think that, I think that that's where you're seeing a lot of this backlash and initial just, Oh, heck no from, uh, sane Americans, moral Americans, rational Americans are not against having conversations of how can we make our schools safer? How can we make our hospitals safer? How can we make our churches safer? Our shopping malls, our Walmart, no one has a problem with having those conversations. Well, it seems like they do because all I'm seeing, look, in the, the Internet is not exactly a bellwether for how actual human beings think because it's just Correct. Ca fucking chaos. But all yeah, the people right. attacking somebody like Dan, like even some of our fans are like, oh, we lost another one. Like, no, he's just trying to have a conversation. Look, if your contribution to the conversation is to get mad and go and say, fuck this, I'm not doing anything, then right. I, honestly, fuck you, buddy. Because that's well, not that's not how that's not how democracy works. We have conversations. Yeah, and, here. and that's a good point, man. And, and that's something me and uh, uh, Dan uh, Crenshaw talked about as well. Was I think a lot of people have to uh, put aside their own worldview for a second. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, you have to remember that Dan Crenshaw six months ago was just a citizen, yeah. right? Well, now Dan Crenshaw is a congressman, and Dan sees things that we do not. Dan hears things that we do not. Dan sees what it's actually like on Capitol Hill. And naturally, it's going to make the way you approach things a little different. You know, a congressman like Dan is not just going to draw a hard line in the sand and say, like you said, shall not be infringed and all this other kind of stuff. They are naturally going to try to open up a dialogue in some regard. Was his wording great on the tweet? You know, as his friend, I'll say, no, it wasn't great. Uh, the, the way the tweet read, just point blank. Um, I wish there was an edit button on Twitter. I think a lot of people do, <laughs> yeah, well, but yeah. there's not. That's never, uh, I'm glad yeah, there's not, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah, but, but, but I, Dan Crenshaw is not trying to take your guns away. Dan Crenshaw is not trying to make it to where veterans with PTSD can have their guns taken away. No, as a matter of uh, fact, I the red flag laws he, that are the TAPS uh, – bill that he's a co-sponsor of specifically mentions veterans exactly. with PTSD and excludes them from any of this legislation by exactly the way. but but that's a lot of that's a lot of hysteria that you're hearing yeah. uh, from, from the veteran community or people that have veterans close to them in their life um i think dan's trying to have a conversation of how can we do better um i'm not necessarily necessarily sure that red flag laws is the the answer to that um but you know i'm not against having conversations of okay 
Um, I don't think we have a gun problem. I, I know that we don't have that. I know that we have, uh, you know, a mental health issue. I know that we have a yep. cultural problem. Uh, it's kind of like you were talking about, Dan, you know, trying to take the guns away or trying to restrict, restrict guns is treating a symptom. It's not treating the problem, yeah. right? So people are using guns as an effect of the symptom of what the real problem is. It's because is. it's easy. And to me, that's just intellectual laziness, but uh, you know, right. intellectual laziness is also just saying shall not infringe. Look, Dan, well, Dan Crenshaw's job is not to unilaterally make decisions on behalf of his constituency. It's to represent right. his constituency. So if he says something you don't agree with, you need to tell him why and what you would yeah. fucking do. Because otherwise, you're full of shit. You're just fucking, right. you're, you're those two Muppet assholes in the fucking top row shouting at the fucking guys on stage. Like, no, dude, yeah. contribute well, you to you need the to have You need to have conversations. And I understand that, that, that you know, we can speak mm -hmm. slightly different because people listening, you know, they don't have active lines to congressmen. You, you know, like, like I understand that as well. But to just simply, like you're saying, draw those hard lines and just thrash people on the Internet, especially people that are for you. Right. Like, like yeah. at the end of the day, if you're a conservative and you believe in conservative values, Dan Crenshaw and people like him are for you. Yeah. Don't so don't I be don't... like those uh, those <laughs> folks on the left who just cannibalize their own people all the time. Right. Like exactly. anytime anybody it... says something that's a little off from their core belief, like, nah, fuck that guy. Yeah. Like, come on. Man. Right. <laughs> Fucking tell well, him. You're... Just say make a reasonable if you have a reasonable argument to make make that argument otherwise shut the fuck up yeah yeah because honestly you no got one wants a, to hear that yeah if you've got an 80 percent girl or guy that you agree with 80 percent of things on don't focus on the 20 percent no. and and tear them down and try to destroy them because on on one thing or two things you disagree on it doesn't take away from the fact that this dude a or this girl 80 percent of the time is speaking for you and yeah. representing you you're never going to agree 100 percent with anyone on anything no but i'll go back to that uh the part where, yeah, we identify, and I think the data clearly identifies. I don't think it does. It clearly identifies that we have a, oh, mental, it does. We have a mental health and cultural issue. So what, what's the resolution to that? Look, in any other situation, like if I, if I went right now to the police and said, Ross has got a gun and he's been threatening people, they're going to come fucking check it out. That's not, yeah. that's not removing due process. That is due process. That's exactly yeah. what it is. So you look, can be detained for, what is it, 72 hours for questioning and things like uh, that? And, yeah, and 72 on a, on a fucking temporary restraining order or a yeah, temporary order of, uh, what the fuck's it called? I can't remember what it's called. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Your wife <laughs> would know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure she would. Yeah, you're right about treating the symptom and not the problem, but I think the right has a tendency to do that as well. Like you said yesterday oh, yeah. that you think we need more guns, that guns are a natural deterrent for people who mean to do us harm. And I think at, at its core, that is a true statement, but <clears throat> on principle, I understand it, but principle doesn't mean a lot when bullets are flying around. I got, oh, that's true too. I got to yeah. tell you, I got to tell you some sleepy turd with little to no training. Who's never been in a shoot, no shoot environment. That's in a classroom or in a fucking crowded mall, uh, has no business firing rounds downrange. Just That's true. grab people and get them out of the way, save as many as you can and get the fuck out of there because you're just going to make it worse. I've seen those situations. I've yeah. seen like Iraqi policemen, for example, try to get involved in gunfights that we're in and they're firing in all directions and they're just making shit chaotic. It doesn't help anybody yeah. and people get hurt that way. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, they don't understand basic principles like bullets travel down walls. Stay, yeah. stay away from the walls. Don't shoot towards the walls if there's friendlies around. Backdrop. Don't shoot unless you know what's on the other side of that fucking person that you're shooting. You know what yeah. I mean? There's a lot of stuff that goes into that. I mean, look, if it's me or Jared, Evan, Matt, any of our friends, we're going to make split, sec split second decisions that probably be, be right because we've done it a hundred times. Correct. But let, let's right. say you're, you're somebody like me, right, who's uh, a novice. And, yeah. You know, I own, I own two, I have two handguns, yep. uh, two SIGs. Love them, and they're great. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, in North Carolina, you can take a six-hour course. Yeah, and get a concealed carry permit, yeah. Yeah, and, and, I, <laughs> and yeah. I can walk around everywhere and be exactly mm -hmm. one of the people that you just described. Yeah, Because I'm not even going to pretend to be on either of your level or, in particular, an, an Evan level. Right? Yeah, he's the best oh, handgun yeah. shooter I've ever seen in my and life. And I don't think, and, and I, you know, I can honestly say this. If we're in a crowded mall yeah. and somebody starts firing and I've, I've got my gun on me and I start firing back, chances are I'm, you know, and it's he's not going to go well. Yeah. No, yeah. If, he, if he's 30 yards past, or, you know, yeah. maybe even 25, <laughs> but don't, I mean, you, I'm, I'm probably not going to hit him and I'm probably going to kill training? everyone yeah, yeah. forever. You 21. shouldn't feel bad about though. Look here, four, point, yeah. point four five. So point four five, less than half a percent 
of the U.S. population has deployed to a combat zone. Something like one-sixth of those are what we would call shooters in the Army, 12% in the Marines, 1% in the Navy and Air Force. That is a very small amount of people who know what they're doing mm-hmm. in those situations, like an v- incredibly right. small amount. And I'm not trying to be critical necessarily of you. I, I think what you're saying in principle is true, but we need to unpack that a little bit. If 9 out of 10, ten people had guns, I think this is something one of you guys said, I don't remember who. Uh, if 9 out of ten, 10 people in public had guns, that would deter someone from doing evil acts. I don't really believe that because the data shows that the death penalty is not a deterrent to violent crime. And these guys go into these situations expecting to die, right? Uh, well, yeah, that, that's they true. They do choose I, soft I, targets, and Homeboy said that in his manifesto. I'll give you that yeah, part for sure. I think, I think we're also talking about, you know, when I say things like that, I'm not, I'm not specifically talking 100% about a mass shooter situation. I'm talking oh, yeah. about any kind Just in of general, assault, yeah, yeah. armed robbery, you know, those kind of things. You know, if if the person that means to do something like that or any kind of harm in any way, whether it's just to burglarize your home or, you know, try to rip you off getting into your car, I, I do believe that the thought of that person probably has a gun on them would be a deterrent. Yeah, now, one, in, yeah. in the in the cases of, like, mass shooters that, yeah, they go in there thinking that they're not going to come out, yeah, I agree sure. with you there that, that they don't care. Um, you know, and again, and that's why conversations like this are good yeah. because when you say things on camera, you know, I don't always break it down for 20 minutes exactly what I'm talking about when I say those things. So I agree with you that mass shooting people, yeah, you're right. They, they, they don't care if, if you shoot them before they even walk in the door. No, they don't care. But on the flip side yeah, they of that, don't care. the idea of a gun-free zone is about the dumbest shit I've ever... Like, do you think a sign oh, yeah. on a goddamn door is going to stop a fucking dude from coming there and clipping somebody if he wants to? I think they like, said honestly. 87%, 87% of what, what uh, would be defined as a mass shooting for more people yeah. uh, happens in gun-free. Yeah, dude, it's so, so stupid. Yeah. Like, you, they don't even... They know that it's a law to not own that gun, probably, if they own it, if it's an illegal weapon. And oh, they yeah. know for sure that murder is illegal. Everybody knows that. So that didn't stop them. You think a fucking eight by five card on the wall is going to stop them? Like, come on, man. That's right. ridiculous. When I, when I, I'll, I'll go back to the masculinity thing. We, people like us, and by us, I mean people who serve their communities, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's something in your DNA, I believe like the masculinity part that you want to fucking serve in some way or another. And some of us are prone to violent service, right? Right. It's our job to interdict situations like this because unfortunately they do happen. Um, That's what we do. Don't fucking tell me not to bring my gun into a movie theater because if something goes down, I'm one of very few people like all of our friends that would actually be able to do something and save people's lives. Don't tell me not to bring my gun to a fucking concert or a fucking fairground or whatever the fuck. That's so stupid. Right. Yeah. But, but on the flip side of that, as a civilian, again, for a six hour course, I could be right next to you at that same concert with the same capability as you have, but I'm not going to be anywhere near. Well, look, it's that simple. That's able it's to so stop simple. a situation. It's a, it's a check mark on your fucking concealed carry permit that says you're not fucking you don't have to follow those extra rules if you're me or evan or matt or jared right and, and so super do, you, simple. do you think that would be p- fuck yeah a, that would, a solution yeah. i mean i think it would be a solution i don't know how feasible it is gotcha Honestly. Yeah. uh so I, and i want to bring this back to the the dayton shooting uh the first responders the, the police were there within 27 seconds yep they, they had that yeah. guy uh capped and he was able to kill nine people in and under injure 20, 22 actually, yeah 22 like injured yep. in the hospital uh nine dead what do you do to stop something like that? Because that, and to my knowledge, at least, that was the fastest response time to a mass shooting that has happened so far in, yeah. this, in this country. Well, here's what yep. you do is what I talked about before. It's Shaw's personal pathway model. You fucking stop talking about guns and you start talking about children, like educating our kids and giving them mm-hmm. positive male role models. This Parkland, Florida shooter is a goddamn example of this shit. Uh, numerous times he was reported. The FBI didn't oh, yeah. do their job and the police didn't do their job. And yep. honestly, this is, the, this is one of the perfect situations where the FBI could red cell, like have their people attack the situation, find out what went wrong, and publish a document saying, here's how this should have been handled. Yep. Well, uh, look, I'm not really quite sure uh, what the answer would have been to stop the guy in, uh, in Dayton. Um, but well, like, here's the so his, his, girl, his girlfriend pretty... did an interview with CNN yesterday. She did. OK. Yeah. And what did she say? Uh, let me find it right quick. 
Was she the one? Because it's, and by the way, there's a lot of confusing information because both of these acts happened on the same day yeah. where they're getting the people right. confused and the media is throwing, you know, yeah. oh, this is a white supremacist, this is a white supremacist, which we'll get to in a second. Um, was, was this the, 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 the guy? The Dayton Gunman's ex girlfriend. Okay. And, and it, he's the one who shot his sister as well. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, she said to CNN, quote, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the guy who was reporting said that the girlfriend told him, uh, I'm sorry, that the gunman told her that he said he told her he was looking for mental health help yep. and he couldn't get it. I don't know what that means, but I know a bunch of people, military veterans especially, who have been in that exact situation, so I can imagine what it means. Long lines, yep. people who won't answer phones, shitbag fucking schedulers who fuck, fuck right. up. And look, man, we're failing people. Those deaths aren't on guns. They're on us. They're on our yeah. society. They're on our society for abandoning. Like, just because people's feelings get hurt at the idea that men and women have gender roles, that we tried to fucking back off of that. And look at what the fucking result is. 26 out of 27 of the deadliest mass shooters in U.S. Oh, history yeah. don't have a fucking dad. Fuck off with that shit, man. Like, yeah. just stop Well, you look it. at You're some of the most people. unhappy people in the world, man, and, and I'll point you to these, you know, th these type of people that are trying to – do exactly what you said change uh gender roles change society in those realms because it, it's all it's all very selfish in nature you are not hearing me the way i want to be heard you are not understanding me the way i want to be understood yeah so you need to change everything that you do to make me feel better you see what i mean yeah. And, yeah. and so it's a it's a very selfish uh, way in general, uh, just to, to, to go about your life. It is, but and, it's also a very easy thing to fix. Look, if you're a lesbian oh, couple with a young son, or you're a single mom with a young son, fucking go introduce him to a football coach. Dude, how yep. hard is it? Get him a positive yep. male role model. It's that simple. It literally is yep. that simple, just based on the yep. data that we're True. seeing. A positive male role model early in their life will stop this shit. Yep. 26 out of 27 times it will stop it. So get the fuck out of here with that. You know, it's, it's stupid. The one thing that really pissed me off, and I, I expect this shit from CNN now. Yeah. I honestly do because they're so full of shit. But the reporter said um, that the FBI had asked her about uh, what kind of music he listened to and what kind of video games he played. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah. This yeah. is not 1990. Tipper Gore is not in the public fucking sphere anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I'm just going to go down some numbers right here. So Motley Crue. These are, these are three of the bands that were mentioned in uh, the, the complaint by Tipper Gore's whole whatever the fuck. Sure. Uh, Motley Crue, 100 million records sold. Black Sabbath, 70 million. Ozzy with another 30, that's another 100 million. Def Leppard, 100 million records sold. <coughs> Violent Video Games, Call of Duty, 250 million copies sold. Grand Theft Auto V, 110 million copies sold. We would all be dead if the oh, shit yeah. caused violence. We'd be dead. Yeah. Yep. God, I, fuck, I would I would add to that that I agree with you that video games aren't evil. Video games aren't whispering uh, or excuse me, uh, rock bands are not whispering words, you know, subliminally in their songs to go get, kill everybody. But what I will say is it goes back to what we were talking about. You know, when I talk about the family and things and I actually just talked about this on the last episode was, you know, Grand Theft Auto is not responsible for people having issues that lead them to shooting. However, um, a six or seven year old playing Grand Theft Auto, it's probably not the best of ideas. Probably and not. That, I mean, it's a confluence of that, things, though. A six or seven that year falls old. On the, but that falls on the family, though. Yeah, allowing yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff to happen well, is, is the point I'm making. Ultimately, it falls on society at large. Look, it takes a village. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. Yeah, but like, it, me, exactly. me as a parent with, with two you know, small boys, I don't let them play those, those video games at that no. age. Right. Yeah, no, and, but your and, kids and would probably be I'm fine, saying. though. Your kids would be fine because you're there. They probably. But if would. you if you add that stuff to the fatherlessness, then that's where the fucking problem starts. So yeah. look, let's address the issue that we can fix. Oops. We can we can yeah. fix this. We can fucking stop this fatherless bullshit. Big brother, big yeah. sister. There's a million different ways to get involved and mentor young. If you're a man out there and you don't have kids like me. Find some kids around that don't have dads and start talking to them about what it means to be a fucking man. So let me ask you, you both this then. Uh, as an overall, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the easiest solution here? And what do you think happens faster? Um, either something happens with mental health issue, they're able to fix that faster, or they're able to fix the gun issue faster. Uh, there's no gun issue, I don't think. 
So, but how do you fix the mental health issue? Uh, the mental health issue takes time. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, so the, there's the, two. There's, there's no. There's no quick. It's it's like we said, symptom and problem. There's no. There's no fast way to treat the problem. No, uh, you know, it's faster to treat the symptom, and you actually have to explore different things to figure out how to effectively treat the problem. Um, it's easy to put gun laws in place. Well, uh, metaphorically, it's, it's easy lazy. To speak. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to do that. Yeah. It's hard to say. You know, what, we're failing in this regard, which is yeah. actually much more difficult, and we need to fix that. But in what other scenario <clears throat> in life is the easy fix a long-term solution? Like, look, right. I'm I'm mad because my fucking Amazon order didn't come in today, so I throw a fucking vase into the wall and break it. Yeah. My anger has been assuaged. The symptom of my anger is gone. It was but my the, vase, though. Yeah, sorry about so. that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the symptom, my anger has now been assuaged to some degree, but now I've got to fix this shit that I just caused, right? And that's what happens, especially in politics, when we pass these laws that are reactionary. They always come back to bite us in the ass, man. Look, yeah. 17 dumb dumbs <clears throat> per year cannot affect 33 million people we just can't do it right. like that that's not how democracy is supposed to work so and you're also never going to be able to and this is the harsh reality that people just don't want to hear is the truth the dark truth of it is is you're never going to be able to stop these horrible things altogether because people that truly have their mind made up that they're going to do something like this they're going to figure out a way to do that and, and, and that's the hard truth that people don't want to understand. But what we can truly affect is we can affect uh, the mental health issue. We can affect this breakdown of the uh, <clears throat> lack of true masculinity within our society. I mean, those are things that we can do to implement, to uh, greatly reduce these issues that are going on. Um, but you're never going to be able to stop a truly, a truly evil or a truly... Uh, uh, mentally hurting person from doing harm to themselves mm. or others, uh, you're never going to be able to eliminate that completely. No, I mean, look, there's, there, there are a lot of things that we can do immediately. We can focus on what the actual problem is, what the data tells us. The data tells us that particularly young white men, right, that don't have dads are going yeah. to go into public at some point <clears throat> mm -hmm. and, and start shooting the place up. We know that young black men are going to get involved in drug crime in inner cities. Right. We know those two things. That's what the fuck, man. We're not running out of dudes. Right. There's, there's, yep. there's men everywhere. Fucking nut up. Government, stop focusing on stupid bullshit and address the actual root cause of this problem. You're five times more likely to get stabbed in England or Wales than you are to get shot in the United States. Oh, Deep, yeah. Period. Yeah. So, I mean, look, if you... If, you, if you're not going to pay attention to numbers, then we're not even having a conversation. Yeah, right. and, and by the way, I'm, I'm with you guys uh, on, on the entire stance. Uh, for the audience, this is why you know, we wanted to, to bring everybody together today to, to have this thoughtful debate about it. Because these are a lot of the questions that are being fired uh, you know, away from the media yeah. and, it and, is, and yeah. from the left in particular. Well, even, um, even when it's one of their own, like Tyson, man. Look, is it insensitive yeah. that he came out the day after and said that? Maybe. But look, dude, ripping a Band-Aid off doesn't feel great. Sometimes you got to do right. it. That's yeah. where the phrase rip the Band-Aid off comes from. Science doesn't give a fuck about your feelings. It, and it, feelings yeah. are not facts. Believe yeah. me when I, I tell you that. We saw. I think one. Go yeah. ahead. Go, go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry, man. Oh, no. We solve issues with facts, not emotions. Consider any time you've been pissed off. Did you make a good decision that benefited you? Or did you do something dumb and rash that you regret it later? Right. Dispassionately yeah. address problems. That is what science is and government of all things, is the biggest social science experiment of all time. Look, we can't, we just can't do this shit. We can't fucking like, oh, we're just going to ban guns. That's late. Look, you're a fucking pussy if you say that. Not because you don't like guns, because you're too much of a coward to address what the actual issue is, because you think your voters are going to get mad when you say we need more men and more masculinity. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, yep. Graham. If, if a Democrat, and I'm, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a big if, if a Democrat does get elected in 2020, what do you think happens with the gun laws? Uh, do you think they go in day one and make a statement saying, hey, <coughs> we're going hard and we're taking, we're taking all your guns? Because that, that's what it feels like um, with I, everything that I'm reading I, in the media right now. I think that it feels that way because it's in the height of the emotion right this second. I'm not necess necessarily sure that the first thing that they would do is try to tear down everything that Donald Trump has done. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily sure that they wouldn't open up the borders or they wouldn't focus on, you know, health care for all or universal incomes first. 
uh, because, you know, the guns and things like once you implement one form of socialism, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time before everything else falls in general. Right this second. Yeah. You know, the, the first thing they would do is go after guns. 2020. I mean, who knows? Well, wh whatever the hot topic of the month is at that point, uh, because they're emotionally reactive group of individuals, mm -hmm. uh, wh whatever the hot topic is at that point is what I think that they would go after first. Here, yeah, here's what I think. Because we're, we're getting close. We're, I, we're about four, yeah, 14 yeah, months away yeah. from this election, and it, it seems yeah. really far away. You know, and now yeah. it's, it's right well, here on, the, on our doorstep. So, yep. Clarence Thomas is 71. Yep. Ginsburg is 86. Stephen Breyer is 80. Uh, whoever is the next president, mm -hmm. particularly if it's a new person, a Democrat that may get reelected, likely will choose one, if not two to three Supreme Court justices, and that is the most important thing in this country right now. Yep, yeah. exactly. So, look, I'm not a Trump supporter. I think he's a knucklehead. Uh, he, some stuff he does is fine. Some stuff he does is, is stupid, honestly. He needs to get his Twitter account. Uh, just somebody, he needs to hand that off to somebody else probably. But uh, I don't think he's a bad dude, and I think he's shown, like, look, the whole bump stock, bump stock thing, I think it's silly that something like that has to get banned. But he did it. That was a smart political move, in my opinion. It only mm. pissed off the right a little bit. And right. it definitely fed some fucking lettuce to the left. That's not, that's not a terrible political move that he made right there. Right. Um, I don't think banning things is the solution. But, you know, <clears throat> he, he's... When it comes to nominating Supreme Court justices, he didn't go, he, he didn't go find fucking David Duke or... or some fucking racist Roy guy. Roy Moore he, or somebody like yeah, that. Roy yeah, Roy Moore. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't go find some fucking jackass. He didn't find a far-right guy. He found Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, m mm -hmm. moderate conservatives. Is, and when, is, uh, when Bush was in office, uh, a junior, John Roberts, who's a moderate, yeah. he actually upheld mm -hmm. Obamacare. Yeah. Look, man, but I don't, I don't trust the current left to do that. I don't either. No. I don't, man. They're, just, they're so reactive. Like, AOC is fucking crazy. The, the whole quote unquote squad, they're all nuts, man. They're just yeah. that's like some of the craziest shit. There's no, there's no version of them on the right. Like the Tea Party people, when they first came out, were a little wild. Like Michelle Bachman's is crazy eyed and crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, but the people that are left over now are, are pretty much normal people. Like there's no there's no far right ideology coming from the right right now. It's all from the left. Yeah, but a, a right. lot a lot of the rhetoric that is is ramped up, in particular from Cory Booker and and a lot of the people that are running uh, today. And, and Tucker Carlson got some heat for this last night, saying that's uh, you know because they're calling everybody essentially on the right a white supremacist at this point. Uh, they're calling Trump the supremacist in chief uh, at this point. Um, and then Tucker Carlson last night said, "Look, white supremacy is, is a fucking hoax." There is not that yeah. many white supremacists in this nation to think that this is a real threat to our country. No, it's like the right mafia. Now. I mean, it's, so yeah. at, the, at the height of the mafia, there were about 5,000 made guys. And right now, so far as we can tell from FBI statistics, there might be around 10,000 white, like legit white supremacists, not crazy dudes living in their mom's basement with neck beards. Right. Like yeah. people who are fucking trying to actually do something politically. I would consider someone that's a white supremacist that has any kind of violent plan or tendency or is trying to incite that that is terrorism because yeah and i and I, I don't like how there's always this rush to refer to a mass shooter as a terrorist a terror terrorism is just a very specific definition of a type of violent crime it doesn't make it any worse that people aren't more dead because it's terrorism right, right. like <laughs> it, it, that's fucking stupid man terrorism is violence meant to coerce polit politics that is exactly yeah. what it is look at the fbi definition that's all it is so look the guy in El Paso likely is a terrorist. Absolutely. Yeah. The guy in Dayton is a, some crazy asshole. Right. Yeah. Right? He wasn't like he's a he's a big fan of AOC and Elizabeth Warren, but I don't think yeah. I don't satanic think, leftist if you really had to define him yeah. politically. Yeah. Like I don't I don't think he's uh that, by, by the way, that got buried. Oh yeah. Oh, of course yeah, it did. Yeah. But I don't think he's I, I don't think anything AOC or Elizabeth Warren has said gave him the right or gave him guidance to go out and do violent shit. Like, this is not no. true. And I, and I don't think anything Trump has said has given anybody the right. Look, he's, no. he uses a lot of rhetoric, but who doesn't use rhetoric in politics? Every, like, every single person like does. If, yeah. you're, if you're a fucking speech writer, like I've worked in politics before. If you're a speech writer, there's one of two majors you have. You either have a communications degree or you have a rhetoric degree, period. Yeah. And for, it's for that reason because yeah. you, you manipulate, manipulate language to excite your base. That's it. 
Yeah, and yeah. look, Graham, me personally, I, I think it's a, an unwise move for the left to label everyone as racist and either make it, because it seems like this, this upcoming election is being labeled as, uh, look, you're, you're a racist if you're on the right. If you're not, you're with us. And, uh, and that's kind of what the division is instead of actually talking about the actual right. issues or things they're going to do to solve it. Um, what do you think is going to happen and who do you think ultimately comes out of this this uh, this race here for 2020 for the left? The, tw the 20. Oh, for, oh, uh, you, you mean who's going to run against Trump? Yeah, because oh, <laughs> Bernie man. was on Bernie was on Rogan yesterday and that shocked my mind. Uh, yeah. I was really surprised to see Bernie Sanders on Rogan. Rogan's not a political guy. Um, no, but he seems to be gaining momentum. And, and in particular, uh, at these debates, they keep focusing on him more and more along with Biden. It seems to be a, a two man race between those two guys. Well, he's not even in the top two right now. Bernie's third behind know. behind Warren yeah. and fucking Trump or Trump yeah. behind Warren and Biden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I know that Biden's up there. I still am not sure that Biden's going to get the nod. I mean, we've got a lot of. Uh, a lot of debating left to do uh, and things like that. And, you know, I, I just I don't know. I, I don't know if Biden's going to end up making it all the way through. I think Biden's Teflon. <laughs> Maybe. I honestly do. Maybe. And, uh, and the reason why I bring this up with Biden. He's not a strong debater, though. I mean, no, he's, really he's the not. worst, but he was bad in the and as a vice presidential candidate. Uh, Dick Cheney well, lit true. him up like the biggest that's embarrassment true. from uh, from Biden against not Dick Cheney. Uh, who was it? Uh, uh, shit, I don't remember now. Lost it. Keep going. Uh, okay. <laughs> if, if, if Biden gets in there, um, I, I think, and, and again, I think on this one, out of the left, if he gets in there, he would probably be the least likely to go after guns immediately and all that other shit. So, yeah. uh, look, if you get Bernie that, or Elizabeth Warren in there, yeah. it is over with. Well, that's not, the they, battle. You've got the old electable. school. Yeah, I don't think so either. I, to, to to be clear, out of everyone that has that is running right now, I don't see anyone taking down Trump. I mean, I just no. I just don't. I, I don't, I don't see anybody doing it. My biggest, it's not a real concern, but my biggest like you know spider sense in the back is I know that I, I'm not sure that there still isn't somebody that might not pop up still. You, you, you know what I mean? And, and, like, I know for a fact that people are beaten down a certain Obama's door, you know, oh, and, and yeah. things like that, you know. And, and I'm not saying it would happen. In fact, she's pretty much come out and said there's no way it's mm -hmm. going to happen, but that's exactly what people say before they do something. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> and, and, and so um, <clears throat> I think of the 20 or 22, I, what is it now? Because Swalwell dropped out. Is it, is it still 20? It's or, 19 or? right now. Yeah, we'll see. 19. I mean, they're okay. going to cut it down to six, at least for the debates. No, and they said they're going yeah. to they're, they're bump that up to 10 now. So they're going to okay. go they're going to go 10. And uh, Michael Moore actually put out a statement. Not, you know, I fucking hate Michael Moore, but he was true in this. He said the only person that could stop Trump is Michelle Obama. Yeah. I don't, uh, well, I don't see how. I, I don't know if he could stop Trump. The, the only person that could give him <clears throat> issue is uh, the only person that could go against Trump to make it in my I think that we're headed for a landslide 2020. And I know it's a dangerous thing to say. People still got to go out. They got to vote. You know, I mean, I mean, they still got to work. Right. Right. But I think that we're going towards a bigger margin of victory than he had in 16. Um, just simply because the left or the Democrats are so involved in trying to take him down now that they're not focusing on how they're actually going to convince people that the surging economy, all this good stuff that he's doing is bad, <laughs> right. you know, and, and so, I, you know, Trump's base is still going to vote for him, that, that there's no way that the Trump and he only got less than 10 percent of the black vote in the last election. If Trump can manage to get 10 percent of the black vote. You're talking about a landslide victory for Donald Trump in 2020. And, and I, think, I think it's a very good possibility for him to do that or more. Uh, if you go into these areas like Baltimore and things like that that Trump is calling out, yeah, it's pissing a lot of people off on the left and he's racist, nah, nah, nah. but then when you actually go into those communities and talk to some of the people that live there, they all love Donald Trump. Right. Well, you know what I mean? And, and, and so that's what that's what I'm saying is I think if Donald Trump can get more than 10 percent of the black vote, I think it's going to be just a, he's going to embarrass somebody. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, the, la- hey, the last topic I wanted to bring up, because this, uh, this popped up uh, late last night when I was up, was uh, this Joaquin Castro story. Oh, man. About yeah. uh, him. Uh, do you know this one, Graham, about him on Twitter? Uh, yeah. Outing all of Trump's donors in San Antonio. Uh, I, I mean, including like mom and pop shops who are running like barbecues and barbecue restaurants and things like that. Um, he's doubled down saying, look, this is public information. Um, it is. It, it, and he's right by that. It is public information. But nobody nobody takes the time or it, it's hidden. How many people are actively searching for that stuff? Though? Uh, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. And it's uh to me, that was one of the shittiest things I've seen in all of this over the last few days was going after people just because of, of who they donated uh, as far as a candidate goes for politics. Um, uh, yeah. And trying to I, I ruin their business, like, ruin their, you know, their family lives. I don't like the public information argument because uh, I think it's a I think it's a cop out. I, I really do. I think it's them trying to backpedal to say, oh, well, it's really not that bad. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. pe- people's addresses. Yeah, you're right. It's public knowledge. You can go to the white pages or yellow pages or whatever crap it is. And you can find out where somebody lives if you really want to. But to take somebody's name, their business their business addresses or whatever it is, and then post it on your highly visible page where millions of people are seeing it. No, no, you have a direct responsibility for that. And that is your fault. If anything happens to one of those people, it is directly his fault, period. I a hundred percent agree. And, and I, I always think if, if somebody like you with the number of followers that you have, if you posted all of the personal information for oh, I could ruin somebody if Cash- I wanted to. Oh, yeah. it, like, there would be 10,000 people outside Joaquin's house in about an hour if you posted it. But I'd probably have the cops at my house it, yeah. is the difference there. Because right. if I yeah, were to do it. Yeah, you would also be called a racist white supremacist and blah, blah, blah. Right, blah. <laughs> exactly. By the way, uh, ma- the Castro family are, are behind trying to get uh, unlawful presence, which is part of the fucking Immigration and Naturalization Act, decriminalized. Oh, yeah. By the way. Yeah. Cory oh, Booker, Cory it. Booker's on that train, several others. That's yeah. the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. They're like, the the argument is they're only illegal because we say they are. Like, murder is only illegal yeah. because we say it is, bitch. Yeah. That's how law works. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck are you talking about? I want I want more money. I can't go steal it from somebody well, else simply because you said that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. That's sir. a criminal act. <laughs> well, I identify as someone who's not doing a criminal yeah. act. So I'm unlawfully uh, taking the money, not illegally doing it. So it's a, there's yeah, a difference. yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I think that it is a direct hypocritical contradiction. You know, they're claiming that Donald Trump's rhetoric is inciting violence against people. What is that? You know, what what is what you just did? Why did you post that? You posted it because you want people to get mad at those individuals. That's why you posted it. There's no other logical explanation that you could say to try to justify why you would post those people's names, their businesses, how much money they contribute. That, that There's no other reason that you had other than you hate those people and you want the other people who hate those people to know who they are and where they're at. Exactly, I, I 100% agree. Um, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. This is going to be bros and broettes across the board. Uh, we're going to give it to the first responders uh, yep. in, in Dayton and in El Paso uh, who did tireless work uh, during all of this. Because whenever a tragedy like this strikes, uh, it, it takes everybody in the, the amount of hours and uh, overtime that these yeah. men and women put in uh, should be recognized. Uh, and in Dayton, responding in under 30 seconds, mm-hmm. that is just phenomenal. Yeah, um, and we don't know yeah. uh, all the names of those first responders. We do know the name of one guy that isn't a first responder, Glendon Oakley, the guy we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what his – I know he's an Army guy. I just don't know, uh, like, if he's, if he's in – if he's at Bliss or whatever the case is, which is in El Paso. But, you know, he took it upon himself. He's 22 years old, man. He's a, yeah. uh, he's a logistical specialist. He's a 42 alpha. Like, he's not yeah. a shooter. He's just some guy that does paperwork for a living. Happened to be armed at the mall, pulled his gun out, and started rescuing kids, 13 of them. Man. Yep. So Good for him, man. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, Graham Allen, where can everybody find you besides your Dear America podcast? Uh, yeah, well, you can definitely check that out, Dear America podcast, wherever you stream that. But, yeah, you can just Google Graham Allen. You'll probably find some very uh, unflattering things about me. <laughs> uh, but, but, no, just, just Google me. I'll be there. 
the most hated and beloved man in America, in my opinion, Graham <laughs> Allen. Uh, we, we love having you on the show. Uh, thank you for the time today. For Graham Allen, Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>